we will be discussing the Watson and Crick model for DNA, which is a right-handed, double-stranded helix, both strands complementary and running in the opposite direction, making them anti-parallel. Each strand consists of nucleotides, which are comprised of a phosphate, a sugar, and a base. Here we have our phosphate molecule with the double bonded oxygen. Here we have the deoxyribose molecule. And at the end, we have our nitrogenous bases. The phosphodiester bonds make up the phosphate backbone of the DNA and are responsible for its negative charge. The backbone is also hydrophilic. The nucleotides are linked to the strands in a direction influenced by the placement of ribose carbons 1, 2, 3, and 5. Each antiparallel strand is read from the 5' prime carbon to the 3' prime carbon. Carbon 1 is where the base attaches, which is here. Carbon 2 is how we tell the difference between deoxyribose and ribose, whereas ribose would have an oxygen attached and this does not. Carbon 3 is where the 5' prime of the next phosphate will bind, and here is the phosphate group 5' uh, prime. The bases at each complementary nucleotide are either single ringed pyrimidines, thymine and cytosine, or purines, adenine and guanine, which are double ringed. Base pairing occurs between adenine and thymine in equal amounts and cytosine and guanine in equal amounts. Two hydrogen bonds are used for thymine and adenine, where three are used for cytosine and guanine, and they lightly guide the base pairs together. The base stacking created from the orientation of the antiparallel strands, complementary base pairs, and hydrophobic nature of the base is, is what stabilizes the DNA from the destabilizing forces of the hydrophilic phosphate backbone and torsion. The helical nature of DNA presents two grooves in the structure, a minor and a major, Major groove allows for ample protein interaction space, while minor grooves allow for less. The grooves in DNA go up and to the right in the Crick and Watson model, making them right-handed. Most DNA is right-handed in B form. If we were to place DNA in a solution with a high sodium concentration, we could achieve further stabilization of the DNA molecule. Because of the negative charges of the phosphate, there is a repulsion force acting on the backbone of the helix, essentially pushing the strand apart. Adding sodium adds positive charges and neutralizes the negative ions of the phosphate and stabilizes the hydrogen bonds and hydrophobic interactions of the bases. When graphed on a melting point curve, Tm represents the midpoint of thermal denaturization. By adding the stabilizing solution of sodium, we can raise the midpoint. More heat would be needed to destabilize or denature the molecule, hydrogen bonds, and hydrophobic interactions.